Hello and welcome to Bachelor Exam Prep IIS. As part of a comprehensive news analysis today, we'll be discussing another set of six interesting articles out of the Hindi newspaper Delhi edition. Now, the topics for today are quite interesting with regards to what we have to cover. Good morning to all of you. First is semiconductors, that what do we do with semiconductors? We'll try to understand what is the process of creating semiconductors and where is the potentiality for India. Thereafter, we'll talk about the IPCC report. If, you know we discussed it yesterday also with regards to synthesis report. But there's an interesting article which was published with regards to CAMPA and IPCC report, how both are contradictory to each other. Then we'll go to being the World TB Day today, a Johnson & Johnson attempt to make one very important drug, a patented drug under them. And thereafter, one defense news, the Arudra, radar system, thereafter COVID-19 and how there's a percentage which has been given to us, very important for the claims examination. And then two portals which have been introduced by the Home Minister himself with regards to art and culture. So art and culture and GS paper 3 is going to be our focus today with regards to very interesting articles generally in the paper. With this, let's enter into the first most important topic we have to discuss today, which is semiconductors and the potentiality for India. The first thing, let's understand the basics here. First and foremost thing, what is a semiconductor? A semiconductor is a material made out of silicon, silicon, and it is fabricated into what we call as chipsets, circuits, use PN junction as it is called, technically to give the intelligence or the mind of any hardware today. Chips and chipsets are used in every device from a smallest to smallest Bluetooth device to defense technology to big planes and everywhere, wherever there is hardware, there will be software and in software we need a chipset. So therefore semiconductors are a very strategic zone because from defense technology to electronics to any technology today, there needs to be a certain amount of semiconductor which needs to go into it. Now, semiconductor industry generally is a very strategic industry for across the world. However, there are four basic steps to create a semiconductor chipset. First, you design it, then you fabricate it, then you assemble it, and once you've assembled it, you have to test it. So there are four basic steps in creating any form of semiconductor, design, fabrication, assembling, and testing. Now, out of all of these four, the most difficult part is fabrication. And herein lies where India and other countries want to enter, but is a very capital intensive zone. So the fabrication which is making the silicon into the semiconductor beta resistance or a capacitor, that is the most expensive part and that is the most difficult part in itself, is a very capital intensive industry. Assembling and testing is a little bit easier. Designing is the easiest part in semiconductor based industries. Now, when we talk about fabrication, Taiwan used to be the foremost and the biggest producer of semiconductors in India, uh, in across the world rather. Now China has become that. China comes first and second is Taiwan. And Taiwan and China technically control close to 80% of the fabrication market. America has recently introduced a bill in its Senate so as to push for fabrication of semiconductors in America itself. So there's a push all across the world to fabricate semiconductors in their own national boundaries. However, in India, we have a concept of what we call as PLI, Production Link incentive scheme, PLI scheme in electronic sector. Just refresh our memory with regards to PLI. What is PLI is that when a company reaches a certain output target, it gets certain amount of subsidy or incentives. It's technically like a cashback scheme. So it tries to push for export economy and tries to bring in the manufacturers into India. If they hit a certain output target set by the government, they get incentive on every unit produced thereafter. Now, PLI in India has been working in a lot of sectors. In the electronics sector, it has been very successful, bringing Foxconn to India itself with regards to Apple assembling the phones in India now. 
But the problem with regards to the PLI scheme generally, and I'm again discussing the basic point of everything right now, then we'll go into the integrity. The problem with PLI is that though assembling plants are coming to India, fabrication plants are very rare. More than that, chipset fabrication has never been produced within the Indian boundaries and very soon we will have one fabrication plant which is going to come in India and the announcement is going to come within the next two to three weeks. Now, if India has to enter the chipset market, the semiconductors market, India can enter at all these four junctures, design, fabrication, assembly or testing. So I'm again repeating myself with regards to semiconductors, silicon is the basic raw material which is used to produce what we call the chips and circuits. Silicon is produced into semiconductors, PN junction and therefore there are four basic concepts, design, fabrication, assembly and testing. And across the world, Taiwan used to be the foremost producer across the world. Thereafter, China has just recently taken over and America is pushing for a major fabrication based concept within American borders. However, that is going to be an uphill task in itself. India has been using a PLI scheme across sectors to attract the people or attract the companies to India to assemble and produce within India. PLI gives a certain amount of what we call as incentive after a certain amount of output. However, when we talk about India, India has an opportunity in all these four sectors. Now what the article technically points out is that when it comes to fabrication, Fabrication is that one zone in, in which what we call as fundry, fundry factories. It is very, very capital intensive. It needs billions of dollars to set up. It needs a lot of money to maintain because it needs clean water. It needs a certain amount of insulation. And if India plans to go into fabrication, which is producing the chipset out of the silicon itself, then our semiconductor industry is going to go into a certain type of lethargy or certain type of limbo because the profit is going to come after decades because the initial cost of invest the initial cost of setup the investment is quite big and if it is quite big then profits should not be seen for at least 50 to 60 years so what the article is, is trying to talk, talk about is let us not go into fabrication because if we go into fabrication then there will be a major what we call as lethargy a limbo and then the companies will automatically get disincentivized to produce anything in India and we can't wait for this gestation period rather India should go into the other three here it points out that in assembling and testing which is called OSAT outsourced assembly and testing is something where the initial cost of investment is less, capital investment is less and it is easier to do and it is much easier to bring in any other company into India and do for assembling and testing of chipsets. We are right now not assembling chipsets. We are assembling the basic things which are coming from different countries. For example, China sends most of the components. We just assemble it here to as so as to produce the iPhone itself. So in the same way, they are saying fabrication, let it be with America or with, with China or with Taiwan. Let us assemble the chipsets in India, which is going to give a major boost to the semiconductor industry. And because the gestation period is not quite long, profits will come automatically and that could lead to a moment in which fabrication could happen in India. Then it also says that India has one major advantage in designing. When it comes to Intel or NVIDIA or any other designing company which designs the chipsets, most of the designers of the semiconductors as of right now, chipsets as of right now, are Indian or Indian origin. So there's already a lot of intellectual potential with regards to designing. And therefore, designing, assembling and testing is the area where India can actually create an ecosystem which can then further lead to fabrication. So the basic point of the article is that what is the potentiality of the semiconductor industry in India and how can we go forward and over and above that, 
the basic point is that which is the zone in which india should go first rather than creating a disastrous entry in which there will be no profit the, in the incentive is not there too long a gestation period with regards to profit and more than that billions of dollar investment which will make no sense over a period of time so so as to just repeat what we've done till this point four basic components in creating semiconductors semiconductors very important used in all hardwares today third india does not have the advantage in fabrication needs a lot of investment rather let us go for osat which is outsourced basic assemblage and testing so that we can bring in the companies first get the technology first and then also use our intellectual potential in designing and create an ecosystem which can then further lead to better form of fabrication industries coming into india so are you able to understand the basic point of the article then we'll go into the nitty gritty that india's potentiality is in this sector what is the challenge the challenge is fabrication is not a very easy task fab or what we call as foundry factories should not be our initial step into this sector perfect so let's look at the nitty gritties what are the basic details the article has given us first that close to 1600 crores has already been given in the PLI scheme for electronic manufacturing. PLI, if you remember, as I said, is production link incentive scheme, wherein we are giving certain incentives after some certain amount of output. However, that is only for the manufacturing electronic sector supply chain. Here also, India is not producing the OLED screens or the LED screens. We are just assembling it here. So the push for semiconductors has been very important with regards to how it's a strategic sector for everybody. Now, semiconductor fabrication units or fabs as they're called, turn raw material into integrated circuits from silicon and are practically fit, fit into any hardware which is available today in the world. And fabrication units are highly capital intensive undertaking billions of dollars for creation also they need reliable electricity supply of water insulation from the elements and very high degree of precision therefore it is one industry one factory which needs a lot of attention a lot of money and is not a very easy task therefore countries have been pushing to go into this fabrication sector and China has pulled away from Taiwan recently to become the largest producer of semiconductors. Americans have passed CHIPS Act in order to put in $280 billion into this sector so as to make sure that they can open their own fabrication units in America. Now the problem as I said is this is a very big investment. India when we look at the case study of Indian sector itself we have a large growing sector with regards to finished product assemblage however very rare concept of manufacturing we are not manufacturing the semiconductors here we are not manufacturing even the screens here we are not manufacturing the basic components component by component only comes to india we are the ones who are assembling that is why that is why the phones used to say iphone used to say made in china now it says made in india designed in california so we are just assembling it in india now when it comes to the manufacturing aspect we have two basic opportunities to make sure that we can enter the semiconductor sector without disrupting it too much or disrupting our own economy in that way because if we put in 200 billion dollars into a factory and it will take 50 years to give us any form of profit then it makes no sense for a nascent and developing economy like us so rather foundry companies which are these producing fabrication companies or fabrication units of semiconductors use a lot of money to produce one chipset itself rather the more potential driven and more important sector would be the OSAT which is outsourced semiconductor assembly and testing which is less expensive to set up and better margins with regards to profits so the profit generation will be very quick in that sense 
more than that OSAT setup is very easy it does not need a lot of capital further India can have a very well based OSAT which is assembling the semiconductors which will be a something new in that regard because we are not assembling we are only assembling finished we are going to assemble the fabricated chipsets however testing is also something which is very important Samsung in India has a very major testing unit in that regard where the all phones are tested the sensors are tested so therefore this is a major sector in which India can develop and go further with regards to semiconductors the first point second is the major advantage which India has right now is that in designing an intellectual labor of semiconductor factory which is the design how we are going to assemble the chipset itself most of the designers and engineers are Indian or Indian origin with Nvidia and even Intel using Indians to produce the design and design problems solutions are being found found by Indians itself therefore India can second push into designing and by creating the right ecosystem this whole sector can be made feasible so the basic point of the article I have now gone into the nitty gritty of the article itself the basic point of the article is three things and I am going to repeat it for you very simply semiconductors is a very strategic sector smallest to smallest to defense technology uses semiconductors and it is a very important strategic sector across the world second there are four basic processes in semiconductor which is designing, fabrication, assembling and testing. However, the fabrication part is the most difficult and capital in intensive needs a lot of money to produce even smallest of margins of profit. Thereafter, the third and major point which the article is trying to talk about is that India should not go into this sector with regards to fabrication because fabrication will need a lot of money and gestation period is very high therefore India should use design potential which is the fact that we have all designers as of right now Indian or Indian origin and also assembling and testing these three sectors don't need a lot of capital intensiveness or don't need a lot of gestation period therefore we can get a profit quickly we can get a profit quickly so these three zones should be the way we create an ecosystem and maybe maybe after 10 years when we have created the right ecosystem we can go for fabrication also but the problem with India is that India does not have the rare metals and the rare earth metals generally to produce to produce semiconductors so the the basic raw material would have to be imported and there needs to be a supply chain which needs to be created in such a way that the the chipsets can be produced in India itself so there's a lot of potentiality it's an interesting article but for us it's a GS paper 3 based very important question because very simply they can ask you potentiality and challenges so are we clear with regards to how we go into the semiconductor sector and how we make sure that we don't fall into the trap of creating an economy which makes no sense right okay now the next is the IPCC report yesterday we discussed a small part of it with regards to how the tone of the IPCC report is already where it is giving up on any form of non-warming or what we call as non-greenhouse gas based effect economy or technology in the world now this synthesis report of the IPCC also pointed out towards two three very important things first yesterday we discussed that how the closing window of opportunity has already reached 0 0.4 degrees Celsius we've already warmed to 1.1 degrees Celsius now what this report actually contradicts is a major policy which is there in India so there's a lot of solutions which this report gives but it technically questions a very important policy so let's discuss this policy so today I am a manufacturer I'm again going into the nitty-gritty I'm trying to explain to you what is a regime in India and we've already discussed that with regards to great Nicobar if you remember we discussed it on Tuesday where we discussed how there's an environmental cost for something 
and we have discussed CAMPA which is compensatory afforestation. But let's discuss how we go about compensatory afforestation. So I am a manufacturer, I want to set up a plant and when I want to set up a plant, there is a major forest there and let's account for that there were close to 2 lakh trees which need to be cut, so there needs to be deforestation to produce or to put in this fabrication plant for semiconductors only. So basically I need to deforest this whole sector so as to, so as to put in my industry. Now this is 2 lakh trees is a very, very big ecosystem. There is a whole small ecosystem within it with regards to flora and fauna and therefore if I am going to deforest there will be certain type of degradation and destruction of ecosystem. So maybe it was a tropical forest which I am going to cut. So in India the concept is that this is allowed which is that you deforest for economic activity. However, there is a regime called CAMPA, Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Regulatory Authority or what we call as a authority which makes sure which compensates for any form of deforestation. So what is going to happen is before I get, before I get any form of license or any form of approval, they will say that because you are cutting 2, two lakh trees, you need to a forest in a zone with 2 lakh trees. So in India there is a very simple concept, deforestation can be undercut by afforestation. So if I am cutting 2 lakh trees, I can plant 2 lakh trees and therefore I am compensating, compensatory afforestation. Now the problem in it you already understand is that you are cutting a carbon sink and you are cutting mature trees and you are planting saplings which will take 10 to 15 years to become even half of the potential of what the forest was. So the basic concept is flawed, the basic concept is flawed. So the management and planning authority, the CAMPA, the basic concept is flaws that deforestation cannot be equal to afforestation or afforestation cannot just compensate for deforestation because you may be releasing close to 2 billion gigatons of what we call as carbon and you are only planting half a million and it will reach to 2 billion in the next 10 to 15 years. So the concept is flawed in itself but we still follow it. Now, what is going to happen is that the CAMPA will say, okay, you identify another plot which is maybe in MP or in central India where there is no forests and you plant and you plant 2 lakh forests, 2 lakh trees, 2 lakh trees. Now this is called compensatory afforestation and what is going to happen is I will pay an amount for the land and the saplings itself to CAMPA. So CAMPA becomes the main authority, Compensatory Afforestation Management and Planning Authority. This is going to Compensatory Afforestation Fund Planning and Management Authority. And what is going to happen is the cost of destroying this ecosystem, I will pay to CAMPA and CAMPA will then on behalf of me plant and a forest in a certain zone. So deforestation equals to afforestation. This is the basic idea. Now what the IPCC technically is saying is that when you degrade and destroy an ecosystem, it is worse than what you do via afforestation, which is that afforestation is not the answer for deforestation, which is that degrading and destroying ecosystems and then doing afforestation in a certain zone is not acceptable and only leads to further warming. It rather says that you need to protect a certain ecosystem rather than destroying it. So basically CAMPA basic principle gets undercut by the IPCC report. The IPCC report straight away says that the CAMPA concept, though it's not pinpointing, our CAMPA concept becomes totally debunked. So the IPCC report very straightforward says and I am emphasizing this point that degradation and destruction of ecosystems is not the solution and 
afforestation vis-a-vis this destruction is also not the solution. Rather, protection is better and preservation is better. And wherein I bring in the Great Nicobar concept. In Great Nicobar concept, if you remember, we are putting up a port and also an airport and we are cutting down the tropical forest there and saying that we will a forest in the, the UP and MP sector. And what the IPC report is saying that this is not equivalent to each other. And this is a very major blow to the Kampa regime. More than that, Kampa right now has 47,000 crores under its ages and nothing has been used. 47,000 crores not used for afforestation only. So just to repeat myself, just to tell you what is the regime in India, I want to cut a forest, I can do that and I will give the cost of the land and the afforestation cost to Kampa. Kampa is going to then in a way, if I'm cutting 2 lakh trees, is going to put in 2 lakh trees, saplings of 2 lakh trees. And we believe that we have balanced the whole system. It sounds dumb. It technically is absurd. But the basic point is, this is the regime which we follow. Across the world, there was no criticism which came through, wherein there is criticism within India. But IPCC report says that degradation and destruction is worse is worse and you cannot offset it by putting in new systems and new system ecosystem will take time to come in and you have destroyed more than what you have created. Are we getting the basic point and what is the contradiction between the IPCC report and CAMPA regime itself? If you are understanding that we will go into the basic nitty gritty. Yes? Perfect. So the synthesis report has pointed out that not degrading existi existing ecosystems in the first place will do more to lower the impact of climate crisis than restoring which has been destroyed. So it is saying that we do more by protecting the ecosystem rather than destroying it first and then restoring it. And it is basic logic and environmental ethic that you cannot destroy and then say, I have created. The destruction will lead to a major concept of destruction of ecosystem and we will also release a lot of carbon into the atmosphere. But no, we believe that if we are restoring while destroying, we are compensating. That is not the way it works. Now, this basic statement contradicts where our CAMPA regime comes in. In India, we allow for forests in one part of the country to be cut down and replaced in another part of the country via the Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority, CAMPA, under the Forest Conservation Act of 1980 itself. A project proponent that wishes to divert land must identify land elsewhere and afforest it pay for the land value and afforestation exercise and therefore the forest department becomes the authority which takes it forward. Now this aforementioned money is looked after by CAMPA and as of 2019 we have close to 47,000 crores under CAMPA which has not been utilized and therefore there has been a lot of criticism that we have been destroying a lot of ecosystems in the name of CAMPA and even that authority is not using the money. So CAMPA is not being utilized and more than that the money does not do justice to what we are doing and Great Nicobar would be a very good example of that and this brings in this whole week in a way in one loop that a compensatory afforestation is not equal to deforestation. We cannot believe that if we cut 2 lakh trees and by afforesting it with 2 lakh trees, we are compensating for it right away itself. There will be a gestation period, there will be a delay and that is not worth it. Now, the basic point is, the basic point is, not degrading an ecosystem is better than, better than, just 
not going for this type of model, which is deforestation and then afforestation. But the report also points out one more thing. Even better, and the way we can stop the warming process, even better than afforestation or not touching the ecosystem, is going for solar power. And there is there are three basic ways in which it said we can stop warming. First is using solar power. Second is not degrading ecosystems. And third would be wind power. But for India, solar power has its own problems because land use in India becomes a base, basic conflicting area wherein we are using a lot of land to put in solar panels and there's a lot of conflict and, and contradictions which are coming through with regards to that. But wind energy potential in India has been more or less utilized but not to its full potential. Both these solutions have their own problems. But for us, why this article is important is because it technically challenges a notion. And that notion is very simple, which is that Kampa is not the answer, is not the answer. So in the examination, how you use this basic concept is, if there is a question with regards to comment or critically analyze, you can use this basic concept that not degrading as existing ecosystems is better, is better than what we do under Kampa. This regime is problematic and needs to be reviewed and the IPCC is technically pointing out it is flawed generally with regards to how we are going forward with it. So is this concept of CAMPA and IPCC report clear? Anyone? Come on. Clear? Yes? Great. Now, we've done two basic topics till this point. First, we try to understand the concept of semiconductor industry and how designing, how the assembling and testing is a better way to go forward than fabrication. And this topic was about CAMPA, how we destroy and compensatory afforestation, which makes no sense and IPCC has pointed out further. Now we will go into TB drug and yesterday, I'll refresh your memory, we've already done the concept of TB and how we can stop TB. Tuberculosis is a preventable and non-fatal, non-fatal disease if managed well. Now, now, yesterday we discussed that in order to stop TB and reach that end TB goal by 2030, today is World TB Day itself, the fact was that we need to have an adult vaccine, we need to use diagnostic techniques which use AI, and last but not the least, we also need better medicines. Now, this article is about that medicine aspect. And it also gives us an opportunity to technically understand what is called the patent loss and a very important word which is called evergreening. Now, the concept of this article is very simple. There's a very important drug which is called bedaquilin. Bedaquilin or bedaquilin. Bedaquilin. Both are used, both spellings are used, bedaquilin or bedaquilon. Now, bedaquilin is a drug which has been patented for close to 20 years under Johnson & Johnson. And it's a very important drug because it can be used in the second stage of TB. So in the first stage of TB, we have very generic drugs, very cheap drugs. But a lot of people start to develop what is called multi-drug resistant TB because we tend to use antibiotics quite a lot. Therefore, the TB, TB bacteria itself starts to develop resistance to it. So therefore, betaquilin comes in the second stage in which basic drugs are not working on you. It's a very life-saving drug. It's a very important medicine. And it is believed that close to 55,000 people in India needed this drug in the past one year. However, however, only 10,000 people got access to it. And the reason is because it is a patented drug by Johnson & Johnson, it is a very expensive drug, close to $400 worth of the medicine is needed over six months to cure yourself. So therefore, bedaquilin is a very life-saving but very expensive drug because of patenting. Now, Johnson & Johnson, in July, the patent of 
the bedaquiline was ending in India. And they had applied for renewal under the concept of evergreening. Now, what do you mean by evergreening? This is wherein comes the intellectual property right concept. So, patents are part of what we call as intellectual property rights. They're protected under TRIPS, which is trade-related intellectual property rights itself. And when patents are there, you cannot produce or manufacture a certain thing because it has been patented to a certain company here, Johnson & Johnson. Now, what evergreening means is a very bad and very cheeky technique to extend your patent somehow. So what happens is that first 20 year patent I got that basically this drug can only be produced by, by Johnson & Johnson. However, that was ending. So what I do is that I change the design of the drug a little bit and then say that, okay, this is a new drug I have produced and therefore I need a patent again for 20 years. Evergreening works in the first instance. Now again, my second patent was going to expire. So I said that I have changed the dosage and it is much better I have a child dose or I need a lesser dosage for the same thing. So again, I believe that I have done innovation. So therefore, patent should be given to me. This is a process which is followed by a lot of companies to just extend their patent as long as possible. Johnson Johnson was doing that again in India wherein they were saying that the way we extract the pedaquilin, quilin, quilon, the, the drug quilon itself, the way we are extracting it is new. However, in a major development, India has rejected, the patents authority has rejected Johnson & Johnson's attempt to make this drug patented again. And they have now said that a generic drug can come in and local manufacturers can produce it for a much, much lesser cost. So it's a major blow to Johnson & Johnson and it's a major win for the people of India and the people who need this drug because it's a very important life-saving drug for multi-drug resistant TB patients itself. So it gives us an opportunity as UPSC aspirants to discuss two basic things, the patenting regime and trips itself and second the concept related to evergreening this can this word can come in the examination what is evergreening what is the concept of evergreening within patents and the concept of evergreening is very simple change the design or dosage to just extend the patent as much as possible keep a monopoly over the drug however india has very simply rejected it India has rejected it, had said that Johnson & Johnson, you are not showing anything new. It is an obvious way to get the quill on drug itself. So we are not going to extend your patent. A major win for the people of India and a major blow to corporate pharmaceutical companies. And this is going to be a significant development and a very interesting and important news coming on World TB Day itself. So let's look at the basic nitty gritty of the article. So in a major win for the people of India, the pharmaceutical giant from the US, Johnson Johnson, had applied for an anti-tuberculosis drug, bedaquilin or bedaquilon, and it had said that basically the manufacturing monopoly and the patent should be extended beyond July of 2023. However, it is a drug which is very crucial for the treatment for multi-drug resistant TB patients, and it is one of the first line of defense after there is drug resistance in TB. Now, when we talk about bedaquilin itself, it was getting expired in July. India has denied it. We will not extend it because now generic drug manufacturers such as Lupin and Megloids can technically produce bedaquilin at a much cheaper cost because this is a very expensive drug right now, close to $400 per six months of treatment is a very big amount in Indian rupees itself. And according to a 2019 estimate, 55,000 patients in India had developed a multi-drug resistance TB variant and only 10,000 got access to it because of financial troubles and generally the access to the drug is very limited. And therefore, this monopoly will end and everybody who needs it will get it for sure and at least Johnson & Johnson can now not push for evergreening. This is the concept that since 20, 2007, Johnson Johnson had been con introducing this concept of a new patent every time under evergreening, which is strategy to extend the life of a patent whilst getting revenue from it. So what is evergreening? Evergreening does not allow for generic drugs to come through in the market. 
original drug was there, 20 years patent given, then they will change the dosage, the basic drug remains the same, still they will be awarded a patent again, and then they will change the formula a little bit, and then they will say again we need a patent, and therefore pharmaceutical companies use evergreening to push and extend their monopoly over a certain drug, and try to make sure that existing manufacturers cannot produce a cheaper version of that drug. Now this is a very major issue with regards to the pharmaceutical sector. The ethics of the pharmaceutical sector is not sound with regards to how they are pushing for the drug in the same formula with little changes whilst making sure that the revenue stream from that drug comes through perpetually and generic drugs, cheaper drugs cannot come through. Now, the firm had argued that the bedaquiline as soon as they applied for the patent evergreening this time, it was challenged by two TB survivors itself and they argued that the way they are deriving quiline is not very new and they are arguing for evergreening by just minor changes. And therefore, the assistant control of patents and design has argued that the way to get bedaquiline is not innovative, it is obvious. Therefore, under section 3D of the Patents Act, it cannot be now patented. So, why is this article important for us? Because it gives us three basic terms. First, betaquiline, a very important drug for TB itself, multi-drug resistance TB. Second is the concept related to, and please understand this, which is evergreening patents being pushed forward year by year based on the concept of what? Based on the concept of small dosage changes or design changes, making sure that the drug cannot be produced in a generic form. Generic form would mean a much cheaper and the formula would be with every different manufacturer. Everybody is going to produce it to the cost of that medicine is going to go down. But that is something which is prevented through evergreening. And third, India has done a major breakthrough with regards to this, where it has protected its citizen and more than that, patients who need it. Accessibility to this drug was a problem. Very expensive treatment. Now India can produce via different manufacturers cheaper versions of betaquiline, a very important drug. And on World TB Day, it is a major win for India and the citizens of India. Are we clear with regards to these three topics? Yes? I'll give you a summary of these three and then we'll move to the prelims bite section. Come on. Clear? Okay. So, three topics we've discussed, very interesting. Semiconductors, how India has a potentiality to design, assemble and test. Second, the concept of how CAMPA regime does not make sense with regards to destroying and afforesting is not equivalent to each other. And third, we have understood the concept of evergreening, patents regime, intellectual property rights and also we have understood that the multi-drug resistant bedaquiline drug will now be available in India in a generic, cheaper way. A major win for the patients and people should have access to it. Close to 45,000 people did not get this drug because of its cost or its accessibility, which is a very sad and unfortunate truth of the pharmaceutical sector. Now, we go into the Prims Bite section. Three very simple but straightforward articles. First is that the Ministry of Defense has now signed a contract with Bhel, wherein the Bharat Electronic Limited Bhel is going to give and the contract is for, and this is the basic thing which you need to remember for the examination, is the Arudra, the Arudra medium power radars and radar warning receivers for the Indian Air Force. Now, in the examination, they can basically give you the name Arudra and ask you what is it related to, what technology is it. So the Arudra system developed via DRDO and the uh, DRDO gave the design. It is manufactured by Bale. Now, B-E-L, -B, not B-H-E-L, Bale, B-E-L, Bale. B-H-E-L, Bale is also different. Bharat Heavy Electronics Limited. Now, very simply, this is a very important radar system which India needs today because of what is happening in the Kashmir and generally in the western sector. Because now drones have become a new way of delivery of 
drugs, arms, and generally a lethal weapon with regards to how there was an attack on an IF station itself. These medium range radar systems, which are based on new technology, which can go for a, even a smaller cross section of a flight, is something very important to make sure that our, our western sector and our eastern sector both are very well managed and monitored. So for the purpose of the examination, we don't have to go into the manufacturer or the developer. We just need to know that Arudra, this term Arudra is basically for a radar system, which has been now, um, there's a contract between the IAF and the Ministry of Defense, along with BEL and DRDO to produce it for our Indian defense systems. So it's a very simple concept, just have to remember Arudra. Now, Next is COVID-19 vaccine, the dosage and the coverage. Now, why am I doing this topic with you? Because they can easily ask you a statement based question. And the statement based question could be that first dose, second dose, third dose, third dose is the precautionary dose. I hope most of you have taken it. The basic point is our first dose coverage is very good. 97% of the population adult population, very good coverage with regards to that. Second dose is also good, which is 90%. So we have taken both the doses and India has very good coverage with regards to close to 90% coverage of first and second. However, when we talk about the precautionary dose, it is only 27%. Now, why am I discussing this with you? Because the fact is, if they give you a statement which says that the coverage of the vaccine is 100%, incorrect statement. It is covering the whole population, again incorrect. And if it says that it has half of the population, again incorrect. It The word which it has to give is first and second dosage is major coverage and third which is the precautionary dosage is very low, is very low. Now why we are discussing this is because for two reasons you should be getting your third and precautionary dose because COVID-19 again is coming back under the Omicron variants and India as of right now only accounts for 1% but in US, Russia and China there's again a new surge of the COVID-19 pandemic itself in a way of, of more and more cases coming through. The second reason is how are we tackling it? We use the vaccines and I've given you the coverage data, 97, 90 and 27. Please do get the precautionary dose. It's a very important concept and the Prime Minister has been pushing it that the COVID-19 pandemic is not over and we need to make sure that we get the precautionary dose also. And the third most important thing for you and me is that what is the five-fold strategy which can be asked in the examination? Test, track, treat, vaccination, and COVID-19 appropriate behavior along with more lab surveillance of the genomic sequence of the COVID-19 virus itself. Now, this is a very interesting thing. Test, track, treat. So if you test, then you track the person, then you treat the person. If you don't go for this three set, then you go for vaccination and COVID-19 appropriate behavior. Again, a small topic. It's not complicated. There are three things I want to emphasize here. First, that the coverage for the third vaccine, third doses of the vaccine is not very big and everybody needs to go for it. First and second doses is good, close to 90%, but never in the examination go for 100% coverage, full coverage, everybody, everyone, extreme statements are not going to work. And the third concept which I want to emphasize here very simply is the five-step, five-step, strategy, which is test, track, treat, vaccination, COVID-19 appropriate behavior. So it's a very simple concept. Please remember it. The first concept was Arudra, the term, and this is based on the dosage of COVID-19 vaccine. Last but not the least, there are again two words which you need to know for the examination and can be asked very easily. Recently, two portals have been introduced. First is called the Vedic Heritage Portal and the second one is Kala Vaibhav. Now, what is the Vedic Heritage Portal which has been developed by the Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts? The Home Minister inaugurated it whilst arguing that basically we are trying to 
secure and preserve our ancient heritage with regards to Vedas, Upanishads and ancient scriptures via the Vedic heritage portal so that for future generations the Vedic knowledge and Upanishadic knowledge is accessible and it's like art and culture current based affair so please remember it the basic point of the matter is this portal will allow later generations even when the physical copies or manuscripts are lost to understand Vedic knowledge and Upanishads and the Kala Vaibhav is basically a virtual museum of close to 64 different arts which from drama to painting to architecture to music which can be seen virtually. So where our cultural heritage is always, remember, always under attack and is vulnerable to the digital world itself, this is where the digital world is giving a solution for preservation. So the HM said that basically we are trying to make sure that the younger generation can carry forward the knowledge of the Vedas and Upanishads via the Vedic Heritage Portal. It will be one stop solution. It has all the information, traditions, original texts and manuscripts of the Vedas and Upanishads itself. And this is going to allow India to be showcased virtually. So it's a very simple concept, two basic terms, art, art and culture current affairs, very important Vedic Heritage Portal based on the concept of Vedas and Upanishads getting preserved within the digital sphere itself. And second, Kala Vaibhav. This is the more probable question because virtual museum, 64 different arts which are going to portray the rich history of India. Now, before I go to the main questions, first tell me, is everything clear? It is a virtual museum so you can see it, you can understand it, the major proponents are there, it is portrayed there. Are we clear with regards to the six topics we've discussed today? Yes, we are. So let me revise it with you and then we'll go to the main question. First, we understood semiconductors. Semiconductors, four basic stages. Silicon is fabricated into, into chipsets. So design, fabrication, assemblage and assembling and testing. And the basic point is India has the potential to not go into fabrication right now because it is very capital intensive. Rather, we go for what we call as designing because it is already an India dominated sector and assembling and testing because the gestation period is low. Second, we then understood how the IPCC report contradicts the CAMPA regime wherein deforestation cannot be compensated directly and immediately via afforestation zone and how CAMPA, the authority itself is holding on a lot of money, it is not afforesting and this whole concept is flawed in the larger context. Third, we then try to understand pedaquilin and on National TB Day, we are discussing the fact that Johnson & Johnson has lost a bid to make the patent go forward with regards to how a major drug was being made and it's a major win for all TB patients and for us generally because now there can be generic drugs which are cheaper and thereafter a Rudra a radar system which BEL Bell produces and DRDO has designed and it is a major win for the IAF because it is needed for how drone technology is being used as a threat towards India. Thereafter, we understood these two portals, the Vedic Heritage Portal and Kala Vaibhav. And in between, we also try to understand how the COVID-19 dosage, third dosage has people have not taken it seriously. You and me have to make sure that India gets the third dosage as soon as possible. And the COVID-19 pandemic is not over. And the five-step strategy. If all of this makes sense, we can look at the two main questions. Is this clear, everybody? Come on. Yes? Perfect. Okay. So the two questions which you have to attempt today. Discuss the potentiality of the semiconductors industry in India. What are the challenges? It's a very easy question. But if you don't have the requisite details which we've discussed today, it is going to become a very difficult question. Then CAMPA creates a regime which allows for the destruction of irreplicable or irreplaceable. Both words could be used irreplaceable or irreplicable ecosystems comment. Now this is the type of question both GS paper 3 are very realistic questions can come in the examination. So with this I would like to end the session. Thank you so much for your patience. I will see you on Monday again with regards to uh, uh, CNA itself. 
tomorrow and day after we'll continue to give you more coverage of the newspaper thank you so much and take care bye bye